What is up everybody, it is Aug here, back with another video, and in today's video we are an SM running through our normal mage farm, but with the AoE cap. For those of you who do not know, the AoE cap went live on the beta tonight, and so I wanted to go through and test all of the typical mage AoE farms, basically to see how they worked with the new AoE cap. The AoE cap is something that has been highly anticipated for mage farming, whether or not you're for mage farming or against it, I think a lot of people are really curious about how it affects it. And I think that a lot of people see this as an integral part to their you know, daily farm or maybe what they enjoy doing in classic. So I wanted to make these videos basically running through the farms and seeing if there's anything that we would need to change in order to make those farms still possible and go through some of the theories that we had. I'm going to assume that you already know what to do during the run itself. So I'm not gonna focus on the strategy of the run too much, but I'm just gonna mainly focus on you know, some of the changes and how to account for the new AOE cap. If you don't know what the AOE cap is, basically the idea here is that damage is normalized to about 10 mobs. All mobs will still be hit by the AOE damage that you're doing and the slow effects for Blizzard, for example. However, the damage is going to be scaled down if you have more than 10 mobs. The exact way that it's calculated is that the maximum damage, non-critical damage of an ability is multiplied by 10 and then divided by the number of mobs you have and then divided by the times that it's going to tick. So for Blizzard, for example, we would take our normal maximum damage of Blizzard, multiply it by 10, divided by the number of mobs that we're killing, which here is about 75. And then we are going to divide it by eight for the actual ticks to get our individual ticking damage. Obviously, when you're killing a lot of mobs, especially something like Mara 500, this is gonna drastically reduce the amount of damage that Blizzard's doing. So we potentially have to think about throwing in something like Flame Strike. Flame Strike's dot on the ground as a ground effect and any other ground effect in the game is not affected by the AoE cap. Mainly, I think that this is to give Paladins the advantage when tanking because of Consecration and holding threat. With that in mind, Paladins are going to be really good for AoE farming with these changes. Regardless, I think that this will probably come through in pre-patch, and so it's definitely a good idea to try to figure out a strategy now so that you could potentially still boost in pre-patch, whether that be with a Mage or a Paladin. So initially when I was thinking about this, I thought that the kill phase would probably have to be us struggling between rank one Blizzard and Flame Strike. And if you have the gear to decrease the cast time of Flame Strike, so either the Encanter set, I think it's called, or the ZG set, then maybe you could do that. What I was running into though was a couple issues trying to do Flame Strike. And so here I try to go for my first Flame Strike and I have some mobs running over from the side, which is weird. But then I also have these mobs run forward here. And it actually just starts this massive separation of all of these mobs. And I just have to try to try to account for and handle it without getting interrupted by any monk or defender. The issue with that, obviously, or the benefit of that is that batching is now instant, pretty much. It's 10 milliseconds, which means that my blizzard is going to tick. And so I don't need to worry about mobs just running straight through my blizzard. So I am able to get them controlled a little bit, but ultimately they're still very separated. And so to be honest, at this point, you should probably just reset and just go do the jump down again. I'm stubborn though, and I kept on trying to pull it off and ultimately ended up dying from trying to do this flame strike strat. I also started getting interrupted on my flame strikes and even with frost bolts, I was getting interrupted if I didn't have up my barriers. And so I started to think about whether or not this is really viable with flame strike. I think with some practice, it definitely is. And so I think if that's something that you wanna try, I 100% think you'll be able to do it with flame strike, especially if you have the cooldown reducing or the cast time reducing gear. For me though, I decided, you know what, let's just switch over to Blizzard and see how that works. Before that though, I did try to move forward here to try to get these mobs stacked back up, drop the flame strike, and got pummeled in the face and died. Once I got back in there though, got back towards the kill phase, I focused more on control. And so here, what I really focused on was continuing my Blizzard all the way until these mobs were perfectly stacked up just as a rank one Blizzard. And so I didn't have as many mobs come down the right side, which was nice, but even if they did, I was gonna hold a rank one Blizzard at the end of this pathway right here. What that does is it allows the mobs to kind of stack up. One other thing that I did right there too was that I allowed the front mob, or I put the blizzard ahead of the front mob, allowing the back mobs to catch up, causing it to stack more. I tried to go for the flame strike strat just once and then I saw them get, getting separated again. And so I, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna switch over to blizzard. The nice thing about SM Cath is that you have so many of these casters in the back that are constantly just pummeling you with frost bolts and you're resisting the majority of them. I don't have any special frost resist gear on. I'm probably running with, you know, about 50 to 60 or something like that. Nothing crazy, but I'm resisting the majority of these bolts. I recommend having at least 50 when you are doing the pull yourself. What's happening though is I'm not losing any mana. Even with the mana regen issues that we have right now, I'm not losing any mana because I'm constantly 
being fed back mana every single second from resisting those spells with magic absorption. So ultimately, it's just going to take a little bit longer to do the kill phase. And that's pretty much what I learned. Even still, in about a minute, we got the, the mobs down to about half health. So the mobs don't have a ton of health. Your blizzard ticks, as long as you're just jumping back and forth, keeping them controlled, your blizzard ticks are ticking for about 30 to 40 each time, depending on your spell power. Spell power obviously has a much bigger effect on blizzard now, as you can see, since uh, max rank blizzard hits for about 200 damage instead of about 160. And so we could definitely see, you know, it's a little bit easier with that. At the end of the day, though, like, you're basically doing one third of the damage that you used to do. So it's just going to take in theory three times longer just by blizzarding. And then I end up at the end going over for the blink with the Nova flame strike Kona cold and then arcane explosion. This is a bit risky. I don't know if I recommend doing this to be honest, because your flame strike and arcane explosion are both going to be nerfed. You could see flame strike only hitting for 150 there, but then the arcane explosion is not. So I'm basically able to allow the flame strike dot and arcane explosion to finish off the mobs or at least get to them to the point where they're running away. So they're not hitting me. So that's an option you can play around with too. The end of the day it looks like we're not really changing much for the strats with the blizzard strat probably wouldn't recommend pulling the boss reason being you're going to be losing your shield a lot more if you have the boss and so you might run into issues where you do have some issues keeping them stacked or keeping mana you could definitely still try though give it a shot let me know how it goes down in the description down below overall though i don't think kath is going to be too too tough with the changes armory however was the dungeon i was most worried about the reason I was most worried about armory is because there's not really a spot where we can jump back and forth. When we kill in the armory kill phase currently, especially with the updated strat, we're basically doing three blizzards and then finishing them off with arcane explosion or Kona cold or something like that. That's not possible anymore because if we're killing, you know, 60 mobs or so, our blizzard won't do enough damage by the time we get to that point to kill the mobs. So what I decided to do here was actually split it up into two separate pools. Typically I do Cath plus Armory plus Library, and I do the first part of Library as well. That allows me to get to 15 minutes for four runs per hour. I figure if I take out Library, at least I can still get Armory, which still nets really good experience per hour, albeit we do miss out on, you know, maybe about 4% of a level per run, up to maybe 10% at the really low levels from Library. But the majority of the experience is going to come from Cath and Armory. So if I split it up into two pools, it still should be pretty good XP. I also forgot to start the timer right there. And so we have to add in about an hour to the run itself to see what armory is actually like. If we're able to do this though and split it up into two pools, that takes out about 20 to 25 or 20 to 25 mobs, leaving us with about 40 mobs in the kill phase, which makes it doable. Still though, I don't really want to go with the blizzard method because blizzard would probably only chunk them down to about half their health. And then I'd run into the issue with all the mobs being completely separated and trying to handle that. You could definitely give it a shot and see if it still works, but I decided to switch up the strategy a little bit and actually switch over to using Arcane Explosion. Before we get there though, I wanna show you a nice little fun bug on the beta that I ended up reporting. There are currently no walls in Armory. So I tried to blink through this to see if I could actually move through it too, but ultimately, blink doesn't work. There's no walls in Armory currently. Other than that though, it's the standard pool, so we're gonna start at the end of Armory itself. So starting at the end of the Armory, we pull the mobs just like normal. They're not going to do any additional damage while you're running through. You're going to have the same mobs until you get out into the open area and the hallway and everything. So you're going to pull the exact same as you always would. Important things in the armory, though, just to touch on for people who aren't familiar with the run, just make sure that you are trying to take the diagonal path throughout this entire thing. If you don't take the diagonal, Diagon Alley, then make sure, then you're basically going to run into issues where you might get too close to mobs and you might aggro them on accident when your arcane explosion your goal is to pull one pack at a time with arcane explosion so there you saw my arcane explosion didn't pull the pack on the right that's the goal because you want to limit the damage that you're taking going into the kill phase to save as much mana as you can if you can have ice barrier up at all times you can't cast it when you're out here that's the best thing you could do right because then you're going into the kill phase with as much mana as possible and you still have you know as much health as possible as well out here in the courtyard it is pretty weird because there's no extra mobs you're aggroing but I still recommend running all the way around just because you do need to get the um, the mobs all into the area. If you wait too long and some, or if you block too early and some of them don't get all the way to you, that's going to kind of throw off some, some issues in the run. Here I do go for the block in the corner of the hallway. So I'm going to take them down the hallway just like I normally would. I go for Cold Snap and then Nova again to make sure that none of them resist. And then I switch over into Flame Strike, Kona Cold, and then Backpedal, Arcane Explosion. What I'm doing actually though is I'm stutter stepping 
while arcane explosioning, which is allowing them to kind of fix their walking position. You'll see that I'm not uh, not really taking many hits as I do this, and that's because of that. If I continue to just walk backwards or if I sidestep like that, I'm going to take a lot of damage. I actually don't recommend doing that Nova that I did right there. You're going to get fed plenty of mana. Your health's going to be fine. Just keep on doing this backpedal walk like this, and if any of them do resist the Kona Cold or don't get slowed, they'll just run up to you, get hit by ice, uh, get by ice shield. Why can't I remember names? Ice armor. Wow. Uh, and then get slowed. So it's not going to be a big issue at the end of the day, as long as you do that. But we're able to get them all down. Retrospectively, would probably recommend trying to kill them in the actual courtyard now if you're going to use this strategy. The mobs will fan out a little bit more, and it will allow them to kind of stack up in a little bit better of a stack as you kite them back. Going down the hallway, they're kind of, you know, going into a very tight line, which is not making it as easy as possible. Overall, though, Honestly, SM looks like it still is possible. I didn't think Armory was going to still be possible for mages, so I'm pretty surprised by this. I'm pretty happy about this. Just going to take a little bit of a retooling of a strat. That being said, Pallies with Consecrate, 95% uh, Spell Power Coefficient on Consecrate, they're probably going to be number one in SM. Real quickly, just to go over the spec that I recommend for SM, you know, this is, is kind of like our standard spec, but obviously we have new talent trees, right? And so the new talents I want to kind of focus on are Ice Flows, which reduces the cooldown of Kona Cold, Cold Snap, Ice Barrier, and Ice Block. This is definitely going to be very useful for SM. From there, though, it's pretty much the standard. We're going to go Shatter. We're also going to run over. We're going to get Magic Absorption, Arcane Fortitude, just to give us a little bit more armor while we're running through the run. And then we're only going to get one point into Arctic Winds, just because we can only hit level 60, obviously. And so we're just going to do everything that we can up until that point. Not going for the Summon Water Elemental, though I imagine some people 